tool that we have uh, created called the Ultimate Skin Texture Wrinkle Sponges. Now you will get a little kit like this and in your kit you will get a description and a little manual. It's very similar to the instructions I'm going to give you on this video. And uh, inside you will get two small sponges with different textures. I'm going to explain to you in a moment. And you will get two large sponges, uh, basically the same as the small sponges, just in a larger format. Now these are little, uh, neat little skin impressions that we're going to be using onto our doll. Um, with the two, I'm going to use the, uh, the larger sponges because you can probably see them a little bit better. And I've also done a bit of a drawing in case this doesn't show up on the video as, as clearly as I would like it. You have two types of sponges here. One is what we call the skin cells, and it has little small cells. I've drawn them kind of out here, and I've tried to do a little bit of a paint impression here. Um, you see if that shows up on, on this video. And then the other one is called the skin wrinkles, and it's a little, uh, little fatter lines and more in the um, areas of uh, wrinkling skin. And I've done a little bit drawing here to, to show you more of what it looks like um, a little closer up. So I'm going to put those just aside for now. Now you may ask, uh, what exactly are we going to use these for? Um, in your skin, uh, when you do your dolls, you're going to find that uh, it's, it's fairly smooth and you may want a little bit of a texture onto it, uh, looking or resembling skin. So that's what these little sponges are all about. Now why I put them onto a sponge and not onto a, a stamp imprint is the fact I found the stamp imprints were much too hard and it was hard to go around uh, the, the wrists, etc. because you were having a very stiff article. Whereas with the sponges, because they are nice and soft, it allows you to go around those areas very easily as it uh, molds right into your little divots and, and creases in there to allow the impressions to get onto your, your doll. So what we're going to do is uh, just we're going to use some mediums. And I would use this uh, in your last procedure, uh, just uh, as your sealer. And uh, whatever you seal your doll with, if you're using heat set, some like to use a satin varnish, uh, some like to use a dewy skin. It will also work with a glazing gel as well as a um, baby glow. Uh, medium. So you can use all of those heat set uh, mediums. Uh, if you have something else that you use as a final seal uh, and as long as it's got a, a stiffness to it, you can use it. If it is very thin, like thinner, it's not going to leave an impression. It will just kind of melt away in the ovens as you bake them. So you have to make sure you have a medium that's going to hold its form uh, once you stamp the impression on it. I like to use it on uh, the smaller um, the smaller sponges I will use on smaller uh, arms uh, of the babies. This one that I've already done. Now you're not going to probably be able to see too much of that because it is a clear medium, uh, but up uh, close you will be able to see that. And at the end of this video I'll put some pictures on uh, with close-ups that will show up a lot better for you. So. And in the meantime, all we're going to do right now is show you exactly how to apply this. Now I'm going to use Baby Glow. Uh, the reason because Baby Glow has a color in it that you add. I've added a raw sienna mixture in here. So I'm going to take my flat brush here and you can see the Baby Glow comes out. I'm just going to swish it around just so it hasn't got any lumps into it here. The reason why I'm choosing to use this is because I think the imprints will show up letter, uh, a lot better on the, uh, on the video here than a clear medium will in demonstrating this. So with Baby Glow, uh, I've got this color. This would go all over my doll, not just in the section I'm going to uh, be showing you. So in preparation, I would uh, basically do what I normally do with Baby Glow, is you put it all over your doll's arm here. Or whatever you happen to uh, 
be using. Now you use it very thinly. We're not after any thickness in this. This is just going to leave a nice little imprint in what you already have. Now with Baby Glow we also uh, we will pounce out our brush lines here. Just so we have a nice smooth surface to work with and we will get rid of any of those little um, puddles that happen into the creases. Now I'm just going to work on the forearm here for this demonstration purpose. And remember, this is my uh, last coat of, um, of uh, paint I would be doing. This arm specifically isn't really painted up to its perfection. It's just used as a demo for this purpose. So with this, I am going to take one of my sponges. I think I'll use one of the bigger sponges. And I'm going to use probably the skin cell. And I'm going to put the skin cells really up into the palm area. So I have to make sure that my lines are working horizontal because that's the way skin cells will grow. And I will take my sponge and just roll it right across that hand. And if I kind of go like this, you should kind of see that there's some indentations going on there, imprints. And I'll just do it down the arm and you can overlap just ensure that you are going the right way. I would never turn my sponge the other way because then that would be offsetting all the way that skin grows. So you do have to make sure that you are doing your imprints the way the skin grows. And as I said, you can overlap. As you overlap, you'll find that your, your little cells will even get smaller. In some cases, you may want that, especially if you're in small sections here. So I've got that on there. Now what I would might want to do is I might even add uh, the wrinkle. The wrinkles um, can go around a wrist area, just adding some a little more lines in there. But since I did an imprint in there with the skin cells, I will add just a bit more and smooth that out of my baby glow. And then I will imprint more of a wrinkle in there and you'll see that you get some nice lines. Now anything, if you get little globs or whatever, all you have to do is just take a little mop and just just brush or dab and it will just get rid of those globs that are in there. So I've got a little bit of a break now. I've got my skin cells coming down my arm and then towards my wrist here I've got more of a wrinkle format uh, going on. So that's uh, basically how I apply it. Um, and if there is at any point uh, a situation where you don't like what you're doing, of course the same rule applies with all of our Genesis uh, heat set products, is you can just wipe it off and basically start again, okay, before you heat set. So it's as easy as that. It's fun to play with. Where I like to apply this, uh, this texture or wrinkles are specifically around the wrists in the back of the hands. I will use wrinkles uh, just a little bit underneath the elbows, um, even in behind the knees. Uh, you see this knee here is very, very plain. So if I went and added just a little bit of a texture medium or a texture in here and use my wrinkle sponge I will get some wrinkles across my knees here which is kind of cool and yes you, you might slip a little bit with the sponge but that's okay uh, it, uh, you can, as I said, any little mistakes. And then anywhere, if I decide not to do all of my doll with, this skin, uh, with the skin texture, uh, fade out your lines just at the end a little with a mop, just by dabbing it, so it doesn't look w like you've suddenly stopped somewhere in the middle of a crease. It will kind of flow into the, uh, the skin. So as you can see, hopefully, you can see that there's lines in there. And any that I don't want, I may decide to just uh, make them disappear. I don't want any on the top of the knee, but I do want it to come down on top, uh, right into there. So there we go. Now I'm happy with that, so I'm going to leave it. And then what I would do is, is specifically with the baby glow, 
I need to leave it dry uh, for a couple hours until all the wet appearance is away and then I will put it into my ovens uh, the same um, temperatures as what your your mediums require you to do. Uh, if you're using dewy skim medium however and you want that shine you have to remember that you need to put it into the oven when it is in this wet uh, situation. So uh, if you wait till the dewy skin is dry you will get a matte skin uh, look when you when you uh, go to bake it. So that is important. Um, the other thing with dewy skin is also remember that if you're going to be, because you're going to cook it wet, you're going to be working one side, cook it, and then if you want anything on the back, then you're going to have to work it a second time and cook it, or you're going to just smash it into the towels and it will um, not come out. You'll get a towel imprint on there instead uh, if you put wet uh, medium down, dewy skin down on a towel. So that's the little thing to watch for with the dewy skin. Now if you happen to be an, an acrylic person, uh, you can do the same technique using acrylics and uh, here at the store we have the Miracle Blend and the, uh, the dry skin formula works very well. It's nice and thick and will leave a nice imprint on there. Or if you want a clear imprint, uh, the thick medium will also use, uh, be used and uh, it can also leave a nice imprint onto your skin as well. After uh, the acrylic thick medium is used, you may have a little bit of a shine there you don't like. You can put your matte sealer over top very, very, very thinly and you can get rid of a, a shiny spot with the acrylics. So there's a couple of suggestions for you to try. Um, we hope that uh, you will experiment with this and have some fun. So, and uh, the other little thing I wanted to let you know is at some time you may have your sponge, we realize the sponges do get dirty and you may get some paint, etc. all over your sponge. So, the little rubber end that has been uh, molded and sculpted onto these sponges can actually be cut off. So you can cut it off your sponge there and you can reapply it onto a clean sponge just simply by using a, a glue. Uh, we use here is the Ultimate Hair Rooting Glue. It seems to work quite well with absorbing into the sponges. And all I do, and it's also waterproof, so that's the other thing that's nice about the Ultimate uh, Glue for the, uh, for the hair. So I'm just going to add some of that. Oh, look at that. I've got hair in my hair rooting glue. How about that? Can't imagine where that would have came from. And I'm just going to apply it onto my sponge. You see, you can... And then just put it down and leave it dry. I would say leave it dry overnight. Any little dabs you can kind of clean off the sides there. And... Uh, in the morning it will be glued on there and you can use it again uh, with a cleaner uh, sponge on the end. Okay, happy painting!